last part of uh, force and motion, uh, astronomy. Now the first part of astronomy is very straightforward, um, looking at gravitational field strength, what it means, um, moons, comets, solar systems, this sort of thing, it's very, very straightforward. The last parts, however, are quite complicated, they're quite mathematical and it's really important that you understand these in detail. So, just to start off, gravitational field strength, so all this is, is, we've talked about this earlier when we were looking at forces, so on Earth, a one kilogram mass is attracted by the Earth's gravity and the force is 10 newtons per kilogram. So on Earth, it is 10 newtons per kilogram. And on the moon, the gravitational field strength of the moon is just 1.6. So on the moon, every kilogram is attracted by the gravitational field strength of the moon with a force of just 1.6 newtons. And on Jupiter, I think it's 26 newtons per kilogram or 28. So depending upon the planet, depends upon what the gravitational field strength is and therefore what the force is acting on each kilogram of mass. Okay? But on Earth, it's about 10. Now it's important that you understand these very, very simple ideas of moons and the solar system and so forth. So obviously, if we think about our sun, our sun is orbited by the planets, okay? So you've got Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, um, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and then Pluto. So you've got these six planets, and all bar Pluto, they're all orbiting in the same plane, and they all orbit the Sun, okay? And the time to go around the Sun is their year, okay? And the time it takes them to revolve once on their axis is a day. So in the case of Earth, which would be this one, we know Earth takes 365.24 or 25 days to go around the Sun because um, that's a year on Earth and we realise that Mercury um, and Venus have obviously a quicker, this is just about 88 days because it's much closer and therefore it goes faster, it's got a smaller distance to cover whereas uh, Jupiter might be 12 years, a year on Jupiter might take 12 Earth years because that's how long it takes to go around the Sun. Now, orbiting those planets, you might have moons. So we have one moon. So the Earth has one moon, the moon. Okay, and other planets have different numbers of moons. So Mars has got a few moons, and most of the planets have got moons. Some have many moons, and others like ours just have maybe have one. All right? So a moon orbits a planet. A planet orbits a star. Our star in our solar system is the sun. You have other things which go around uh, stars, such as comets. And comets come in. Comets have very, 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 very elliptical orbits. Now, all of the planets have mildly elliptical orbits. They're almost circular, but they're not quite. They're, they're elliptical. But comets have hugely elliptical orbits, and they enter our solar system, orbit our star, and go well off into space. And when they go around, it's interesting to note, actually, that the tail a lot of people think the tail of a comet is behind the comet, and it's not true at all. The tail of the comet is caused by radiation pressure from the sun, so the tail of the comet always acts away from the sun. All right. So as, as it goes around here, it acts in this direction. It's obvious as well. The comet comes in, it goes quite slowly here, and as it approaches the sun, the gravitational pull is faster and faster and faster. So it comes in and it goes really, really, really fast, and then it goes off again much more slowly. So as it goes past the Sun, it goes really fast and then off again into space. Now, this is just a part of what goes on in our universe. Our Sun is one of many, 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 many stars. So if we was to think about our Sun. Now, our Sun is part of what's called a spiral galaxy. Now, our star, our sun, would just be this red dot. It wouldn't even be that big. So, there are billions of stars, billions of stars, orbiting a central point. Now, inside there, in our galaxy, is a black hole. So, our galaxy, this is a galaxy now, ours is a spiral galaxy, it's called the Milky Way. 
And our sun is just one of billions and billions of stars all orbiting in this giant spiral shape which is our galaxy called the Milky Way. And it's one of literally billions and billions of stars. Now, it's so big, our galaxy is so big. When you think about the orbit of our sun going around this giant circle, the sun has only been around this giant circle 16 times in its whole existence. So this is an enormous circle. Now, if we think about this galaxy, and we think that's big, but when we look out into space, and you see all these things in the night sky, you see all these different stars and, oops a daisy, you see these, all these different stars and galaxies and you look out and you see all these things. Well, much of what you see are actually not stars at all. They are galaxies. So when you look into space and you think of the night time, you think, you know, there's a, there are lots of stars. Actually, many of those stars are actually much further away than you realize. And if you could see them properly, you'd realize they are galaxies. They're just so far away, they appear to us as stars, but they're actually collections of billions of stars. So the universe contains billions of galaxies. The galaxies themselves contain billions of stars. And each star, well, many stars anyway, such as ours, have planets orbiting those. And orbiting those, you have moons, all right? Um, but that's very simple, that's very simple. That's what happens in the universe. But what's quite important is some of the mathematical elements, okay? So, if you look at the first one, you don't need to know this equation as it's written here. This is an A-level equation, but you do need to know um, the maths behind it. You need to know the, what it's trying to say sim simply. So what it's saying is, if you have two masses, if one is four kilograms and one is, say, another one of four kilograms. If they're attracted due to the force of gravity with a force, now very simply, because the relationship is F equals, you don't need this equation, it just makes it easier. Because it equals this constant which you don't need to know about, it's very simple to see that. If you were to double the mass of one of these objects, so if there was a force between these two objects, that force equals a constant, then the mass is times together divided by the distance squared. So if you were to double one of these masses, say to eight kilograms, but you kept the distance the same, then because you've doubled one of the masses and force is proportional to mass times mass, because you've doubled one, mass times mass, four times four is no longer 16, it's now eight times four, which is 32. So the force, if you double one of the masses, the force would be doubled to 2F, okay? And conversely, if you, if you were to say half one, so if you made it from four to two, then the force would be halved, okay? So other problems might be, but what would happen if you doubled both of them? So instead of going four times four, you went eight times eight. So you've doubled one, so it's times two. You double the other one, so it's times two again, which is times four. And that's quite obvious because four fours is 16, eight eight is 64, that is, four times bigger. So when we're looking at the force due to gravity between two masses with a distance between them are, we don't need to worry about this at all, we just need to remember the force is equal to the masses multiplied together divided by the distance squared. So that if one of the masses doubles or halves or whatever, you need to be able to realize what's going to happen to the force. Okay? More complicated, however, would be if we change the distance. So let's go back to the example where we've got a four kilogram mass. And this time we're going to say the distance is two meters. And that equation again. The 
we do not need to worry about this equation. That's irrelevant. It's just about proportions. At GCSE, it's just about the proportions. So, for example, there's a force acting on this now, and they could say to you, what would happen to the force if the distance between them doubled? Okay? So the distance between them goes from 2 to 4. What's going to happen to the force? Now, some people might think, oh, well, if it's doubled, the force will halve. But it won't. It goes down further than that. So if we were to look, the masses are the same. So nothing's happened there. However, because the, the distance has doubled, it's gone up times 2. But it's gone up times 2 squared, which is 4. So if you think about this, it's gone up by 4 times. R squared, R has doubled to 2, but it's 2 squared, which is 4. And therefore, the force would go down 4 times. It would be a quarter. Okay, so if I calculate an orbital speed, they might say to us, um, here's our star. And they might say we have a planet which orbits the star. Now when the planet orbits the star, they might say the distance from the planet to the star is 4 times 10 to the 10 meters. Now it's really, really, really important that we don't forget this is measured from the center of the star, okay? From the center of the star to the center of the planet. Never the surface of the star or or the surface of the planet, it's always from the centre to the centre. So we've got a planet which is orbiting a star. And we want to know how fast is it going? What is its speed? So we need to calculate what is the speed of this planet. Now the orbital radius is 4 times 10 to the 10 metres. We could say it takes, say, two years to orbit. So we need to work out now how do you work out the speed. And we know that speed is distance divided by time. So if we look, we could say, well, speed equals distance divided by time. But what is the distance when it goes around a full circle? Well, that's the circumference of a circle. So the distance is 2 pi r. OK, or pi d, or 2 pi r for the circumference of a circle. And the time it takes must be measured in seconds. It's 2 years. OK, so we know it's 2 years. And we need to convert this into something that we can work with. So 2 times pi times the radius is 4 times 10 to the 10 divided by 2 years. Now, we need this in seconds. So there are 2 years. There are 365.25 days in a year. Don't worry too much at GCSE about this 2.25, this um, leap year. Um, it's, that's still not right, to be honest, 2.25. But um, as a rule of thumb, if you can remember 365.25, it is better. Now, 365.25 days, now to get it into hours, I need to times by 24. To get it into minutes, I need to have 60, and then 60 seconds in a minute. So, 60 seconds is a minute, 60 minutes is an hour, 24 hours is a day, 365.25 days is, uh, in a year times two because it's two years, all right? So if we put all those numbers into a calculator, we can see two times pi times four times 10 to the 10 equals 2.51 times 10 to the 11. And if we look at two times 365.25 times 24 times, um, Sixty times sixty gives us six point three times ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times ten to the seven. So we could then say two point five one times ten to the eleven divided by six point three times ten to the seven. Oops. And that equals three nine eight four. 3984 meters per second, 3984 meters per second, which is approximately 4,000 4, meters per second.
per second, okay, approximately. So, just to do this a bit more slowly, to calculate the speed of a planet orbiting a star, you just think about speed is distance divided by time. The distance is the circumference of the circle. Remember, it must be in meters. So if the radius is given in kilometers, please make sure you change it into meters. Time, divided by time, make sure whatever this is given in is converted into seconds so that you can give your speed or your velocity in meters per second. It looks quite complicated, but once you remember it's just speed equals distance over time and the distance is a circle, it's actually quite straightforward.